you took your time. Hey, listen. There's plenty of other taxi firms. Just be grateful you're getting a free ride, OK? That's got to change the habit of a lifetime. Oh, whereas hard work's your middle name. All right, look, can we not do this now, OK? We've got to go. We've got to pick Daniel up. Have we? Yeah, I'm sure he's just as keen to hear what Dad has to say as the rest of us. So I'll definitely bring him round then. Well, that's what they said on the phone about an hour ago. So, at least we'll get to the bottom of things now, eh? Yeah, well, that's assuming he's all right. I mean, something like this, off the back of a stroke. He might not be thinking straight. So he'll be conscious today, then? That's what Peter said. Right. Do you think he'll uh, be able to tell you what happened? Maybe. What matters is that he gets well again. The last thing he needs is people pressurising him. Mm. At least he'll have his family around him. That'll help. When has his family ever brought him anything but grief? He's probably better off out of it. Right, OK. Let's be here. We better go. Um, not come in. What? Your dad's just woke up from a coma. He needs familiar faces round that bed. People he loves. I am sure that he would be pleased to see you. I don't think he's my biggest fan, do you? Anyway, it should just be close family for now, until they get stronger. Well, hopefully that won't be too long. No. Detective Sergeant McKinnon. This is my colleague, Detective Constable Hoff. Police? Has something happened? Oh, we need to establish what went on at your house last Monday. Sorry? You were found unconscious at the foot of your staircase. Is that it? Oh. The last thing I remember... I was having breakfast at home. And then, uh, uh, the doctor woke me up just now. We know it's difficult, Mr Barlow, but anything you can recall at this early stage could be vital. It could make all the difference between catching the person who did this to you and not. Who did this to me? Yes, uh, I'm afraid we've strong reason to believe you all fall with no accident. Some up with that. No, it's fine. Oh, well, you're eating it one crumb at a time. You normally eat one of them in two bites. I'm just not hungry. You said that at breakfast. Listen, I'm as upset as you are about not being able to see Miley, but starving yourself's not going to change anything. I don't want to talk about it. If I never hear Seb's name again, it'll be too soon. You've had a lucky escape, love. Look, um, one of Kevin's customers, he's given some vouchers for a free meal. You know, you can come with us if you like tonight. You're all right, I'm fine. Still moping about Seb. I'm not moping. He did so much stupid and now he's getting locked up for it. I've just got to move on. If you don't fancy going out with them, come round mine. We'll get a pizza in, watch a film. Is he be up for it? No, you're all right. I think Craig's going to pop round anyway. I'll get started on my art project. All right, well, I can't help you there because I'm rubbish at drawing. The contusion to your head and the pattern of bruising on your arms and wrists are absolutely consistent with some sort of violent struggle. Yeah, well, I've been on medication since my stroke, which means that I bruise very easily. The medical evidence doesn't leave much room for doubt. Anything you might be able to remember could be important, even if it seems insignificant. Like I told you, my last memory is I was eating breakfast. I was worried about Peter. Tracy was there. Amy was playing the violin. Oh, and uh, our builder was there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I exchanged a few choice words with him. We can account for Mr. Feeling's movements on the night you were attacked. Can you think of anyone else you're on bad terms with? Oh, up to the point where they attacked me. It often helps to look close to home. What are you suggesting? 
Well, passions run highest in close relationships. We see it every day. Plus, there's no evidence of a break-in, so your attacker either had access or you let them in. In the circumstances, it might be best to start with your own family. No, absolutely not. They would never harm me. You can't rule out. Oh, well, yes, I can. And so should you. Always say... I know what you're saying. And you're wasting your time. And mine. So if there's nothing else, the sooner you left me in peace. As you wish. Mm. We'll be in touch. <laughs> Donald Trump. Yeah, without a word of a lie. He bought photographs in and all. Does he some sort of look alike? Oh, I don't think so. He couldn't have been a day over 30. So did you do it then? Uh, yeah, what do you think? Come on, <laughs> the customer is always right. Mind you, he managed to go to three cans of hairspray and even then he was only a light gust away from disaster. <laughs> there. Thanks. Hi. How's Michelle doing? Yeah, yeah, she's fine, thanks. Well, Ken, how's he doing? Uh, well, they've brought him round. Beyond that, I don't really know. Size worried to death. Oh, yeah, I'm sure he is, poor love. Hey, would you like another brew for your sore throat? Oh, uh, yeah, if you make you one. Why not? Uh, the kettle's never off in this place. Uh, what about you, sweetheart? Mm, please. All right. Hey, maybe that bloke was going to fancy dress. Uh, well, why didn't he buy a wig then? I mean, no, I think it was some kind of... Blessed vacuum clean. Oh, I no. should have cleaned up here. Oh, oh God, it's, you can't swing again. Oh, ah! oh sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry. I'm okay. I'm no, okay. you're not. Oh, come on, I think you're going to be seeing Ken sooner than you think. Oh, please. You have to get you to hospital. Oh. Hey, Dad. Hello, oh, Peter. What are you doing here? I thought you were in Canada. It's a long story. I had to come back when I heard. Are you all right? Hey, uh, we got you the financier from the shop and a whole nut, so you'll be well set. Daniel wanted to buy you grapes. Talk about a cliché. The cliché for a reason, the good for him. Nice enough. So, how are you feeling? I thought I was in your bad book. Hey, that was then. Some things are more important. Wasn't the impression you gave me. I'm amazed to see you here. Oh, Tracy's right, Dad. Something like this puts everything in perspective. Oh, and uh, Toya sends a love. Because yeah. she forgave you. Dad. What happened? Who hurt you? I don't know. Don't really. Hey, okay. It's all right. It's all right. You don't have to talk about it now. You just concentrate on getting well. Uh, how are you? Did you catch up with Sinead? Sinead? Yeah, you were looking for her. Is everything all right between you now? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's fine. Thanks, Dad. So you don't remember anything at all? Oh, I remember lots of things, Tracy. Just not about that night. First, eh? What? Oh, no, I'm just the new boy on the job. <laughs> Be me soon. My training finishes next month. Yeah, how's it going? Yeah, good, thanks. I'm looking forward to getting started properly. I just want to help people. Nice. Oh, uh, speaking of which, thanks for giving Faye hand with her artwork, by the way. She could do with a friend right now. What art? Some art project you're going around to give her a hand with it, are you? It's news to me, mate. I'll go and see if there are some more chairs. Yeah, well, try to keep away from the pharmacy trolley. What does that mean? Nothing. Go oh, hang on. It sounded like something to me. It's mixed up with drug dealers. That's where the bruises came from. What? You told me that some bloke had caught you at it with his missus. No, you said that. What's, what's been going on? I had a problem with drugs. That's true. That's why I came back from Canada last year. You told me that you came back because Dad had had a stroke. But it turns out you're a junkie. No. 
I was hooked on prescription painkillers. Well, OK, look, I'll be the last one to condemn you. Oh, well, why don't you form a support group? Listen, I'm not proud about it, but I wasn't shooting up in doorways or anything like that, all right? And I'm over it now, OK? Oh, really? So, how come Dad thinks you were beaten up by some drug dealers, then? It was a misunderstanding. Listen, this has nothing to do with me. Come on, Grandad, you must understand. Stop pressurising him. Might be better if it doesn't come back to him. Better for who? All right, all right, that's enough. Let's just, just calm down, OK? It's fine. Dad doesn't need this. Do you want some more juice, Dad? Here you are, Dad. Let me sort out your pillows no, for you. No, they're not no, in the right place. No, leave me alone. Huh? No, leave me. No, no, right. What are you doing? I want you to go, all of you. Dad. I want them to leave now, please. Dad. I don't want you here. All right, all right, all right. All right, we're going to go. <sighs> Tracy, come on. Okay. Come on. I don't believe it. He looks scared of us. Maybe he had a good reason. Uh, he's just not well, and that's all. We shouldn't have gone in on mass. No. I still don't understand where drug dealers have come into it. I mean, Dev sells painkillers. Don't make him Pablo Escobar. Grandad heard the word drugs and he completely overreacted. He wanted me gone, so I. I went and got a bed suit. In Canada? In Longside. Well, why didn't you tell us where you'd gone? I thought it'd make things easier. Well, it certainly puts you a long way from the scene of the crime. What else have you said that's easier? Nothing. I've done nothing wrong. Oh, I've had enough of this. So we had to leave. He couldn't cope with us all at once. But he, he seemed compromised. Well, his memory's patchy. You can't remember what happened on the night he fell. So he looked OK. He's going to be all right. Uh, Roy, can you get that for me, please, love? Uh, would you excuse me one moment? Hey, there's nothing to worry about. Your granddad's in good hands. He's sitting up in bed and everything. I'll let you know when he's up for a visit, eh? Yeah, well, don't try ringing me. Oh, here we go. I wondered how long it'd take for you to mention that phone. What's this about the phone? He had it confiscated and he deserved it. Not for the whole holiday. What happened? Mr Rawlins copped us sending a message in class on the last day of term. It's not like we were doing any work. We were watching a DVD on the Battle of Bannockburn. Where is it? In Scotland. No, the phone. Oh, Mr Rawlins has it. Yeah, well, as far as I'm concerned, he can keep it. Do you know what? It's been absolute bliss. No more dings, buzzes and stupid noises constantly going off. Whole two weeks without it. Perfect. Right, look, I should get back to work, so, uh... I'll see you later. Bye. 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 Thanks. Um, <clears throat> would you be able to manage on your own for the rest of the day? Uh, yeah, yeah, I suppose. Why? Where are you going? Uh, to, to, to visit a friend. Oh. Hey. He was scared, stressed. If anything, we've set his recovery back. <clears throat> you sure you can't remember anything? Last thing he remembers was having breakfast that day. I was hoping all this would be over. That I'd be able to tell the police what happened. Oh, it's a shame. It's more than that. This is a problem for both of us. Us? He must still think that you're pregnant. Well, did you not put him straight? No. He was scared and upset enough as it was. And I wasn't sure how he'd react to news like that. What are you doing here? I'm talking to you. Oh, my God. It's not Ken, it's not Dad, is it? No. But I am Tim. There's no coming back from it. Look, whatever it is, I'm sure you'll be able to sort it out. I don't care about me. I care about him. I just want to make sure he's OK, but he doesn't want me anywhere near him. You look like you could do with a cup of tea. Come on, go back to ours. Thank you for coming so quickly. Not at all. How are you? Alive. Uh, better than somebody hoped. You sounded uh, a little distressed on the phone. I, I was worried. 
I just want to alarm you, but I'm just finding it so difficult to come to terms with things. Uh, have you received bad news? Yes, but not from the doctors. The police think I was attacked. Yeah, yeah. Um, Pete, Peter said, yeah. Did he say anything else? Only that you uh, had difficulty recollecting the incident. Yeah, absolutely nothing. That's what's so frustrating. Nothing beyond a sense of... Um, uh, uh, a sense of... Um, I don't want to burden you, boy. I shouldn't have contacted you. No, um, <clears throat> Peter also said that, uh, that you seem scared. I mean, that, that sort of feeling I'm more than familiar with myself and quite understandable given the circumstances. The idea that a stranger could break into your home. You and said, that's just it. If that was the case, then perhaps I could live with it. Except that it was chance. That it wasn't personal. Well, you, you suspect otherwise? Yeah. I think it was personal. Deeply so. In, in, in what way? It wasn't a stranger who attacked me. I think it was one of my family. I thought you were in Canada. There was a change of plan. I ended up in a bed sitting alongside. Longside? And what's happened to your face? Actually, on second thoughts, I do not want to know. I do not want any more trouble. Nor do I. I swear I could do with a favour. Where did you get that one out of? A cracker? Look, I don't mind making you a cup of tea, but... Rosie, listen. I need you to tell the police that you were with me on my bed set last Monday night. My granddad's got amnesia and he can't remember what happened that night. And I... I was in the vicinity when he got hurt. Where? It doesn't matter. But I was close enough to be a suspect, so I need you to help me out. No! No way am I lying to the police for you. Because you know what? I actually can believe that you did it. Well, I didn't. But if you really think I'm capable, you might want to think twice about disappointing me. I'll take my chances. And your mum? Wouldn't look too good for Councillor Metcalf if her daughter was caught up in a drug scandal, would it? The Gazette would have a field day. I might have fell for that once before, but not again. You are bluffing. You clearly don't know me. I would have gone to the police the first time, and I'll do it now if I have to. I don't see how we can avoid telling him. It won't be long till he twigs I'm not pregnant. Hopefully he'll be stronger by then. He'll be more able to cope. Well, so we just lie to him until then? If necessary. But as far as possible, we should avoid the subject altogether. I don't want to upset him. Oh, no. We couldn't possibly risk that, could we? He's my dad. Yeah, so it's your call. But we need to tell him sooner rather than later. I appreciate that. But we can pick our moment. And then when the time comes, we can... finesse the truth. Finesse? How do you finesse an abortion? Oh, I don't know. Uh, maybe by saying that it was a miscarriage. You're less stressful that way. Easier to deal with. Is that just Ken you're talking about? <sighs> Sinead. I just want you to be honest. It's pretty clear how you feel, so you might as well just say it. I don't know what you mean. Yeah, you do. You can't forgive me. You've not been able to look at me in the eye since the abortion. You, you can't bear to. That's not true. You're ashamed of me. Admit it. That's why you'd rather lie. No, it's not. We don't want to have to explain everything to my dad. We don't have to explain anything to anyone. It's nobody's business but ours. And I won't have other people judge you. I don't care about other people. I want to know what you think. I love you. That's never changed. Yeah, go on, you go and sit down. Oh, Maria, come on. I'm not an invalid. Yeah, well, your doctor said that you needed to rest. Well, I can't spend the next six weeks doing nothing. You will if you've got any sense. It's broken. Yeah, I've got another arm. I go do Lally just sat at home. Well, you go do Lally and work. Face it, Audrey. A one-armed woman in the salon is about as much use as a one-legged man in a backside kicking contest. Hmm? Yes. I had a model family, but I never thought it would come to this. Th th this feeling you talk about, Ken, is it rooted in some half memory or 
some basis of fact. No, but it's real. They were here am I, around the bed trying to be supportive, but it wasn't affection I felt from them. It was menace. Which is why you summoned the nurse. I was genuinely frightened. It was one of them. Right, you can't be sure of that. No, I am. But you know the worst bit? I couldn't begin to tell you which one of them. How damning is that? You never justify an attempt on your life. You must share your suspicions with the detectives. How can I? One of them already hates me enough to want to kill me. And if I tell this to the police, I'll just permanently alienate all the others. Well, I... I can't pretend it's not a risk, but I mean, the alternative is, is less palatable. So, do, do you really want to live the rest of your life in fear of your family? I mean, if, if, if they could do this once... Yeah, I, I know, I know. Then, then you must tell the investigating officers. Life doesn't come equipped with a panic button, Ken. You were lucky this time. If they're allowed to try again, you... you may not be so fortunate. We're back in Coronation Street in half an hour. <laughs>